Yes. So welcome everyone. Uh, I'm David Pichardi. I'm the chair of the program analysis and parsing session. Uh, we will start with a, we have two distinguished papers in this session. We are very lucky. And the first one is a, a distinguished paper. And the talk is given by Mathieu Lemaire. And the title is SSA translation in an is an abstract interpretation. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. So I'm going to tell you that the SSA translation is an abstract interpretation. So this should be a surprising sentence, right? Because the uh, SSA translation uh, it takes, uh, is a program transformation. It takes a source program and transforms it into another program in SSA form. While um, abstract interpretation is a tool to describe static analysis. And a static analysis, they take a source program and uh, they output a joint simulatives. Um, which is a, a way of describing a set. Um, but still, um, if, there are things, if there are different things, they are complementary. Um, like your analysis can improve uh, SSA translation, and uh, um, this is known as uh, optimization. And on the other hand, you can have uh, SSA translation is often used to make your analysis faster or more precise. So they are complementary, but distinct uh, things. But uh, are they really uh, uh, distinct? Uh, well, obviously, I will not keep you in suspense any longer, given the title of my talk. So SSA translation is an abstract interpretation. And what this means in practice is that you can perform SSA translation using a simple yet efficient uh, data flow analysis path. So why is this important? Uh, the first reason is the theoretical. I think it allows uh, for a better understanding of what is SSA and how this uh, transformation works. Um, so in the paper, we provide a simple syntax and semantics for uh, SSA. We provide a new algorithm for SSA translation, which is a simple data flow analysis. And one thing which is interesting about this is that we do not use any notion of uh, dominance uh, in this algorithm as is classical in uh, classical SSA uh, translations. Um, usually, you do SSA translation to enable an optimization named uh, global value numbering. Uh, but in our work, we uh, instead do kind of the opposite. We first do a kind of global value numbering on which we uh, build SSA translation. So it uh, allows better understanding of the relations between uh, these two things. And finally, um, our abstract interpretation technique um, can be used to produce SSA, but it can be reused on other uh, cyclic terms, like it could be useful if you want to produce uh, formulas or things like that. But in practice, uh, why is this important? Is that uh, when you have uh, an analysis as an abstract domain, you can combine it uh, with other analysis in such a way that uh, when you do all the analysis together, it's more precise than to do them in sequence. And so the issues uh, of which analysis should be done first, which is called the phase ordering problem. So I will be giving concrete example of that. So in a classical compiler, uh, you will do an analysis uh, like this. Um, First, you will transform your program uh, into SSA form. Then you will do a first uh, analysis, which is called constant propagation. Then you will do another path of transformation where you will replace uh, uh, and place constants in your programs instead of uh, expressions. Then you will do a dead code analysis. And then another transformation where you would remove uh, useless statements uh, in your program. So what we propose instead is to do uh, everything at the same time to only do the analysis, uh, the SSA translation analysis together with the constant propagation analysis and the dead code uh, analysis. And uh, we let the uh, SSA translation pass do the um, kind of uh, uh, modification of the source code automatically. And uh, it's uh, good because uh, this uh, uh, transformation pass where you have to modify the IST are particularly uh, error prone. Now, another application and the original motivation for this work is uh, machine decode decompilation to SSA. So SSA decompilation is a kind of uh, SSA translation, but instead of uh, starting from a high level language like C, you start from a really low level language, which is the machine code. And because it's a low level language, you cannot do syntactic uh, directed translation anymore. You really have to do an analysis so as to be able to do a decompilation to SSA. But this analysis can benefit from SSA. Um, so what we do in uh, our work is that we do simultaneously the SSA decompilation, which helps the value analysis. 
which helps the memory analysis, which helps the control flow analysis, which is necessary to produce SSA, and uh, we solve the chicken and egg uh, problem uh, by doing all the analysis at the same time. And we have applied this to verify properties of microkernels directly for the machine code. So uh, I will argue that the essence of SSA is to first have a structure which is called the global value graph and to add control flow information on top of that. So I will start with the symbolic expression, expression analysis, which is the way that we can compute the global value graph. So we start with a kind of symbolic execution. So one could see a symbolic execution as a kind of SSA translation, but uh, limited to a single pass. Um, and what we do is that we attach to every control location uh, what we call an abstract store. And what is an abstract store? is something which uh, maps to each program variable a symbolic expression representing the value of the program. And uh, do, doing uh, uh, the analysis amounts to doing term manipulation and rewriting uh, so that uh, we can, in the end, relate each program variable to uh, a term that represents a value in the program. But implicitly, what this analysis does, it, it builds a uh, the global value graph. So what the global value graph is a relation between all the uh, symbolic expressions in the program. And uh, the main important uh, uh, relation is um, uh, mapping each expression to its uh, subterms. Now that's a bit of a more complex uh, control flow. Um, and we will be adding conditionals and if expression. So we start again from an initial state where uh, each variable is mapped to a fresh uh, uh, symbolic variable. We do x equal 11, x equals 22, and here we do a join. And basically, um, the phi node of SSA uh, represents, uh, well, uh, is, um, uh, appears when we do a join in the uh, data flow analysis. And what does the phi expression uh, stands for? It's kind of non-deterministic choice between 11 and 22. So let's move on. Y is equal X. So, and Z equals uh, also another non-deterministic choice between 11 and 22. Now, what should be seen here is that um, we would like ideally to uh, show that X equals Y because uh, they are a copy of the other. But uh, we don't want to prove that X equals Z because this is false because they come from two different non-deterministic choices. So here we cannot distinguish between all of them. So to, to be able to make this distinction, we need to introduce names. And there are two possibilities. Either we can name the phi functions, like here, or we can give a name to the terms. And that will be what we do here. So we will give a different name to each of these uh, uh, phi nodes, x1 and z1. And here it's clear that x and y are equal, uh, but are different from z. OK, now how do we handle loops? Uh, we'll do another analysis again. So this is just a simple counter which is incremented. So x equals 0, x is still equal 0, x is mapped to 0 plus 1. And now we do uh, another join. So we introduce a new variable x1. We continue. Now we are x is mapped to x1 plus 1. And if we join again, we will create a new variable x2. So it's clear that if we do and uh, continue doing things like that, uh, we will not terminate. We will always create fresh variables. So how can we solve this problem? Well, the idea is to uh, uh, give a deterministic name to uh, each uh, uh, fresh variable. And not use fresh variable, but deterministically named variable instead. So when we join here, we will give it the name XL2. And the L2 comes from the control location L2, which is here. So that when we uh, uh, continue the analysis, at this point, we will have reached a fixed point. So let's look at the uh, cyclic term graph now. Um, it has this shape. So uh, well, the global value graph is now a cyclic term graph because there are cycles in the term graph. And actually, these variables are what are called recursion variables in cyclic term graphs. 
Okay, so to summarize now, uh, the global value graph is a cyclic term graph, and the names of the variables in this term graph have two uses. The first is to handle pre precisely non-determinism, and the second is to allow for uh, termination of the analysis. And the technique that we use to name symbolic variables is to reuse the name of the control location, and intuitively you can see the um, control flow graph as a kind of a cyclic term graph, where the control location are the recursion variables, and somehow we lift this cyclic term graph into a, term, a data flow graph. And that's how uh, our technique allows to uh, handle the, the, the recursion. Okay, so how do we define a meaning to this analysis? So as it's common in the abstract interpretation, we give a meaning by uh, defining a concretization function. Uh, so now this concretization will uh, map abstract stores to something, and this something will be a function from symbolic variables to concrete store. So let me give an example. Here I have an abstract store, which says that x is mapped to the expression 2xl0, y to 2xl0 plus 1. And what it means, it means that if xl0 is 0, then x is 0 and y is 1. If xl0 is 1, then x is 2, y, and 3, basically, we just evaluate uh, the symbolic expression here using the evaluation. Uh, so these abstract stores, they can be used to represent state properties. Like from this abstract store, I can easily deduce that x is even, that y is odd, and that there is a relation between y and x. But I also can represent abstract transformations, which are relations between the current state and the beginning of the program. So we can easily deduce that x is two times the value of x at the beginning of the program. And so in the paper, we prove that this symbolic expression analysis is sound. Um, what's interesting in this proof is that the assignments are sound and complete, so we don't lose any information when we do assignments. The guards are incomplete uh, because we don't uh, do anything about guards except detecting when they can be uh, dead code. And the joints are incomplete because we introduce flash variable, but it's also unsound, uh, so we, which will be a bit special. Uh, but it's actually sound in the context where we use this join operation, which makes an interesting proof uh, in the paper. Okay, so now let's move on to uh, the SCC translation per se. So first, let's inspect in our symbolic expression analysis, where do we lose precision? And I will argue that it's because we lack control flow. So um, what's first thing to note is that the origin of symbolic variables is lost. So here we have a simple program with just this increments two counter, one x is incremented by one, y by two. And here, uh, the abstract state that we uh, put at the beginning of the loop, it just says that uh, x and y are given two different fresh variables. So actually, we don't know anything about this variable, uh, about this abstract state. It's uh, just the top value. Uh, so one way to recover some precision is in the global uh, value graph, um, where we have relations between uh, how x is uh, incremented. But as you can see, you have two separate cycles. So which it looks like uh, x and y are incremented separately. Whereas uh, it's very important actually in the program to see that they are uh, incremented at the same time so that we have an invariant that y equals two times x. And also the guards are completely ignored. So in both cases, um, this relates to control flow information. It's because of control flow that x and y are uh, incremented at the same time. And also we attach guards to control flow. So we really need control flow. So let's do that. We'll do a SSA translation by data flow analysis by adding control flow to our symbolic expression analysis. So we start uh, uh, from L0 um, is given an initial state, and we add a new node L0 here. When we analyze L1, we create a new edge from L0 to L1. As is standard in a data flow analysis, we uh, make an optimistic analysis, so we make as if this was not uh, reachable. When we see guards, we just translate them using the symbolic expressions. When we uh, create new uh, fresh variables, 
uh, we uh, introduce in the control flow uh, a binding to say what was the value of this variable. So here for x L4, it was either 0 or x L0 plus 1. So we add them in the hedge here. And uh, we do the same here we, when we have a, a new fresh variable for XL1. So we revise our previous judgment of the fact that L1 had only a single uh, uh, incoming edge. Uh, one thing which should be noted here is that actually this SSA translation here is wrong. Um, meaning if you execute it, we will have traces which do not correspond to the uh, original trace. So up to uh, now, in the previous uh, 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 states here, we had uh, an unsound translation. It's normal that the analysis is unsound because we have not reached the fixed point yet. But it was complete. Um, so all the traces here are sh uh, shortcuts of the uh, prefix in the program. But here it's no longer the case. The case we have uh, incorrect traces. Uh, but in the paper, we uh, fix this. Uh, we fix the algorithm so that we, have, we can have a complete translation at every, at every step. Uh, and then we finalize uh, the translation by correcting everything uh, which, is, uh, uh, which, which was incorrect. And in the end, when the fixed point is reached, we have a SSC graph, and this is the result of a SSC translation, which is both sound and complete. So now I'm be, be giving the operational semantics of the SSC graph, and you will see that it is quite simple. It's quite different from standard SSC uh, representation, but it's, uh, it's uh, a simple, it allows for a simple semantics. So when we have an edge like XL1 uh, gets XL0, we just add XL1 to the environment. So here we started from an initial state where XL0 was mapped to 2, and we just add uh, things to the environment. Here we need to take this path because the other one is guarded. Uh, here we have another assignment, XL4 gets 3. And here we remove uh, XL4 from the environment. And actually, this is a kind of uh, optional step The reason why we remove L4, uh, XL4 is because L4 does not dominate L1, so we can remove it from the environment. This is an optional step which will be very useful in, uh, in future work. Um, one uh, very striking thing about this uh, 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 translation is that uh, uh, because the SSA translation, to be correct, it must be a bit simulation between the original a source program and the uh, translated program. But this translation is also performed by the, uh, also computed by the abstract interpretation. I will show you how it works. So in the initial state here, we have uh, um, L0, which is mapped to, uh, to it maps X L0 to 2. And in the initial state, the corresponding initial state of the uh, original program, we have X, which is mapped to 2. And the correspondence here is actually Uh, already computed here in the symbolic expression analysis, which is that x gets uh, xl0. And it will work for every, uh, uh, at every step of the, uh, uh, um, at, uh, at every control location. Uh, so what's interesting here is that it's both a bit simulation, but as it's also a function, it's actually something which is called Uh, surjective strong homomorphism between the two transition systems. And yeah, I, re I repeat, it's automatically computed by the abstract interpretation. Okay, so we did a quick uh, evaluation on the uh, 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 use case. So basically, we uh, implemented uh, um, SSA translation, and then we followed uh, with the path that takes our SSA translation, our SSA graph, and translates it to LLVM, and we analyzed it into uh, using a, a uh, code generator. And we use Sesmith because it could generate huge unstructured C functions. And the implementation is very uh, small, it's uh, less than a thousand lines of uh, OCaml code. And uh, basically what should be remembered here is that um, it's sufficiently fast to be usable in practice, meaning that if you uh, incorporated it into GCC, you would have uh, like a seven times slow down, but it's uh, not as optimized as the GCC uh, analysis, of course. And we need only a few iterations to converge. Um, and, uh, One thing which is of note is when we combine this SSA translation with other analysis like dead code elimination and constant propagation, that actually 
improves uh, the analysis time uh, because some edges are no longer needed to be analyzed. So this it was uh, an interesting find. But something we don't know yet is that if we heavily optimize uh, the uh, implementation as done in traditional compiler, can this approach reach the same level of performance than traditional approach? Um, I don't know that yet. So to conclude, um, what are the key takeaways here? Um, first, SSA translation can be described as a sound and a complete abstract interpretation and done using a very simple data flow analysis. It's a very, very simple uh, algorithm in the implementation. The proof is a bit more complex. Uh, it allows combination of SSA translation with other abstract domain. Second point is that SSA can be described as first global value graph, then you add control flow information on top of it. And we provide this SSA graph, which I think provides a simple syntax and semantics for SSA. And the third uh, last point is that we can use abstract interpretation to produce uh, cyclic term graphs, which can have other uh, applications. So thank you for your attention. I will be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Okay, so we have time for questions. So please uh, give your institution a name. Uh, hello, so I'm Jack Gallini from Cambridge University. Uh, is the SSA translation plus the dead code elimination and all that, is that somewhat similar to sparse conditional constant propagation? Do you guys do uh, constant propagation as well? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, you mentioned SSA translation with uh, dead code and with... Uh, Uh, so what I was wondering is, is that somehow equivalent to uh, sparse conditional constant propagation? And could you integrate uh, constant propagation to get this property? So the question is, can, can we see constant propagation as a kind of SSA translation? Or, or like, like, specific? Does, does your translation implement something comparable to sparse conditional constant propagation? I think there are similarities between both of them, especially in the constant propagation, you have a lattice of a finite eight, um, which allows the uh, lattice to converge quite quickly in practice. Um, and we have uh, approximately the same kind of lattice uh, for our uh, uh, symbolic expression analysis. Um, so I think there are relations between the two uh, in like the, the uh, time needed to converge will be uh, approximately the same. And it will have the same complexity. I think both are related uh, because of that. Okay, I have a, I have a question. Uh, there, there exist several uh, variations around the SSA form. Uh, especially uh, some of them try to deal with alias information with most and may alias information on, on virtual variables. Um, so how could you make usage of alias information inside your presentation? So uh, yes, um, so the question is how can you take advantage of alias and memory analysis uh, to improve the SSA translation? So that's something that we uh, do in our uh, 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 original motivation uh, of uh, um, of a machine code decompilation. Um, so basically, it's a kind of uh, uh, reduced product between the memory analysis and the SSA analysis, where when you can detect that some variables are equal, then you can allocate the same variable. Or like if you do a load, um, a load uh, followed by a store, you can uh, uh, use the uh, array theory lemma to detect more equalities between variables and reuse some SSA variables. So we have this kind of uh, uh, reduced products, uh, but those are not formalized yet. Okay. Last, last question. I have another one. Uh, so when you get, um, when you transform a program into a SSA form, 
uh, you you could try to minimize the number of uh, fee instructions that you insert because otherwise uh, uh, blow up of new variables. Uh, so this, uh, this is this notion of minimal SSA or prune minimal SSA. How do you relate uh, to, to that? Um, yeah, so there is this minimal SSA form where you try to build a, a minimum number of fee variables. Um, the prune version adds a information where is the fee variable will be needed in the future. And because we do a forward analysis, we cannot produce a prune SSA form. Well, that's not entirely true because if you take our uh, global value graph, you can see that it has a dependencies from expression to this sub expression. So it's kind of a, relay, a reverse de dependency. So in some way, it does an automatic slicing version of the program where you can, so there are some connections with prune SSA form. Uh, other than that, we produce minimal SSA form because one of the key points that our analysis makes is that if you have uh, any symbolic expression alpha on the left and on the right, then phi of alpha and alpha will give alpha and we do not introduce a phi variable. And that's why we, uh, our analysis does a, a minimal SSA transformation. Okay, thank you very much.